talk about that new mission statement from the Business Roundtable today, sparking a debate about the purpose of a corporation and why maximizing shareholder returns is no longer the main goal. A statement signed by almost 200 CEOs, including J.P. Morgan's Jamie Dimon, says companies should focus on all stakeholders, including employees, customers, and local communities. Um, this is interesting. What do you guys think about? Positive sum game and the end of expert. Technology helps organizations become great places where people create value through interaction and interdependency. The tools of the modern digital world of work change what is required of leaders. They no longer dictate, but influence instead. These leaders set the vision and context for others to start creating. Now, I've used the word platform a couple of times and I know that I'm amongst people who know very well what a platform is. And we all know that platform businesses and platform business models have a particular, have a couple of particular characteristics that make them very attractive. The first one being that, you know, from one instance, you can be active in one country, but you can also be active in many other countries. And it's almost at zero marginal cost that you can build scale. It's amazing. Given the pace and speed of change, strategy creation is no longer an activity that is confined to the executive team. Rather, it is an effort to galvanize the entire organization to act around a common point of view about the future. But how do you innovate in such an ever-evolving, rapidly changing environment? Simon Wardley has proposed a model for relentless, continuous innovation in large companies. What you need are three types of people. Pioneers, settlers and town planners. All of them are brilliant people. Pioneers are able to explore never-before-discovered concepts, the uncharted land. They show you wonder, but fail a lot. Half the time, the thing doesn't work properly. You wouldn't trust what they built. They create crazy ideas. Their type of innovation is what we call core research. They make future success possible. Mark Weiser had his vision of ubiquitous computing all the way back in the 1980s. A vision of small, inexpensive, robust network processing devices distributed at all scales throughout everyday life. One could argue that it's only now becoming a reality. Settlers can turn the half-baked thing into something useful for a larger audience. They build trust. They build understanding. They learn and refine concept. They make the possible future actually happen. Apple Newton was the first mass-scale ubiquitous device. Looking at it now, it pretty much sets the shape for an iPad, including handwriting. However, technology in terms of memory, processor and internet weren't there quite yet. Town planners are able to take something and industrialize it, taking advantage of economies of scale. They build the platforms of the future and this requires immense skill. You trust what they built. They find ways to make things faster, better, smaller, more efficient, more economic and good enough. An iPhone is the perfect example of an industrialized, personal device. Apple produces around half a million iPhones per day. Each group innovates, but innovation is not the same for each group. The innovation of an entirely new activity is different to the feature differentiation of a product, which is different from converting a product to a utility service. This requires a different mindset and attitude of each of the types. 
For instance, Settler's job is to identify common patterns or new activities in the ecosystem. Once a pattern or activity is identified, their key role is to steal it from pioneers and productize it. The job of the town planner is to build a core volume operations based, good enough, ultimately low margin but highly industrialized services and commodity components. This means that each group steals the work of the former. Town planners stealing from settlers, who steal from pioneers, who build on the work of town planners. A virtuous cycle of innovation. And if you would like to use a different word for stealing, pool fits the definition of this innovation cycle too. Here is an example of how we apply this model to the platform design context. We identified a clear gap between designing of service and designing for service modes of creation. There were no good enough tools for platform design or tools for building a successful platform organization out there. There are some theories, but no best practices. That's why we took on the role of a settler. First step, outsource your pioneers. You won't find many in your own organization. And that is good. There are frameworks in the world that serve as a great basis for us to start building on. Ben Thompson, a great and like-minded analyst, provides us with wonderful reports on how he sees the platform world shaping out. Uh, universities, such as University Utrecht, is an ideal collaborator of us and collectively we are making sense of what's going on in the business and society at large. And if I say outsource, I mean open source, let others contribute. The thing still needs refinement. The main point of this step is to operate frugally. We are not paying for anything. And if you give people tools, wonderful things will start happening. Our toolbox is a real box that people can hold and touch. It feels like something. And to let others contribute, we have created space by setting up a Slack group and a Trello board to collect ideas. And it's not only kids that like to play. Trust me, make it playful. One step in our methodology is a real game. And believe me, there are no shortcuts. An innovation must be widely adopted in order to self-sustain. Roger's adoption curve serves as a great compass to identify the type of people we encounter. This is our journey of how we started sliding down the adoption curve. It was in 2015 when we started connecting people. The innovators, the kind of people that are immediately on board with a new idea. There are not that many of those, we had to search carefully. Two thousand seventeen was all about sharing the new practice and get the early adopters on board. These people massively helped to spread the word about the practice and pull us further through the adoption curve. After two years of sharing the practice, we reached the early majority that started innovating business. We not only shared the practice in an educational sense, but applied with people to their contexts. And it's only when we reach the late majority that the culture will transform. Exciting times ahead! But now I'm gonna stop blabbering and come and see for yourself.